Operation Bealtaine was the Defence Forces security operation that was surrounding the Queen's visit to Ireland. This involved Defence Forces personnel being deployed at various locations, including here in Baldonnell, where she would have landed, Farm Lee, where she would have spent the night, the Kildare National Stud, where she visited, among many other locations. My role during the operation, I was a lieutenant at the time, and my platoon would have been deployed in a perimeter in defence providing security. My platoon would have arrived here in Baldonnell 48 hours prior to the Queen landing. There was also a lot of other elements here in the base on that day, the, including the Army Ranger Wing, the Air Defence Regiment and also our infantry company. The public would have been very aware of the ceremonial aspect of the visit, but this was only one part. And in fact, there was a lot of Defence Forces personnel deployed before, during and after her visit. And this was all going on behind the scenes. I was Chief of Staff during the visit of Queen Elizabeth uh, some 10 years ago. Uh, and my re recollections, I recall that we didn't get a lot of notice, uh, maybe a couple of weeks. Uh, so we had a lot of preparation to do from an operational perspective with a huge involvement. Our rangers were involved, our ordnance people, our infantry, we had infantry companies located in different locations. Uh, we had engineers who conducted searches of various locations. And um, we had a very good liaison with the Gardaí. Uh, we worked very well together and cooperated fully in all aspects of it. Uh, we also had good liaison with the British Embassy. The Ambassador Julian King was a, did a terrific job. And the protocol section in the Department of Foreign Affairs. So huge preparations. The ceremonial side, of course, was a key to a lot of it. We were lucky that our band had been brought up to spend. Uh, and we had a terrific ceremonial section who organized everything uh, to the highest standard. Queen Elizabeth II, the United Kingdom of Great Britain, and Northern Ireland, and her husband, Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, made a state visit to the Republic of Ireland on the 17th to the 20th of May, 2011. This visit was at the invitation of the then President of Ireland, Mary McAleese. It was the first visit by a reigning British monarch to the Republic of Ireland since 1911. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh landed at Casement Aerodrome Baldonnell and were greeted by Antonishta Eamon Gilmore and Deputy Chief of Staff Support Major General Dave Ash. An Air Corps courtesy guard of honour lined the route presented arms as the party were escorted down the red carpet. The officer in charge of the escort of honour, Captain Laura Keane, rendered a salute to the Queen and invited her to accept the escort of honour. When Her Majesty the Queen disembarked the aircraft in Casement Aerodrome, I stepped forward, saluted Her Majesty and invited her to be part of the escort where we would bring her to Orson Uchtron. There's an awful lot of planning and preparation uh, involved in the escort of honour. Prior to her visit, we would have met with protocol and her staff to discuss the route, the timings, in order to deliver exactly on time to our Snoopthrow. The escort of honour, provided by two cavalry squadron, then departed for our Snoopthrow. Tri-Service Guard of Honour, provided by 5th Infantry Battalion, Naval Service and Air Corps, was led by Captain Tom Holmes. In, in 2011 I was um, selected as the um, officer in charge of the Tri-Service Guard of Honour uh, to hand over to Queen Elizabeth II in Orson Uchtron. I suppose I was a little bit nervous, um, a little bit more nervous than your everyday Guard of Honour because we were fully aware of the uh, media spotlight on us. but. Um, it was only afterwards then I personally realised of the magnitude of the occasion. Um, at the time then, just to calm the nerves, just um, going over and over the words of command in my head, I was fully confident in the troops that I had behind me, that they would be able to perform the drill, and it was up to me then to ensure that I got the words of command correct. Your Majesty, Captain Tom Holmes, in charge of the Guard of Honour. The Guard of Honour has been drawn from 2nd Eastern Brigade, Air Corps and Naval Service. The Guard of Honour is ready for your inspection. Majesty. My name is Ian Kavanagh, I'm Petty Officer in Irish Naval Service. 
as a member of the Tri Service Guard of Honour in Orson Uteron for Queen Elizabeth. When we got off the bus in Orson Uteron, there was slight anticipation and nerves, but we were practised so much, we were ready for the day. When we were filling outside Orson Uteron, waiting to be inspected by Queen Elizabeth, I knew that day that we were part of something very special, part of history. My name is Airman Billy Doyle and I was part of the Guard of Honour in Orson Uteron. Uh, when we marched on to the parade, it was then when I realised how important this parade was going to be. I was a little bit nervous when I first went on. Uh, we'd done a lot of practice uh, leading up to the parade, but this was the time when we, we had to perform. It really was amazing to be part of such a historic occasion. The preparation which went into the visit of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth in 2011 was very similar to uh, preparation that would go into other state events of this uh, nature. But because it was, I suppose, a very historic event, being the first visit by a British royal for 100 years, there was much, a lot of anticipation around it. And, and we, had a, we had an extra um, event added on to this, which we had to prepare music for. So the band played at, th at three separate events, where we normally would have only played at two, or at Snook Tron and at the Garden of Remembrance. The music which we played while Queen Elizabeth inspected the Tri-Service Guard of Honour in Oris Nuktron was a specially commissioned piece um, from Bill Whelan. Normally uh, at those events we try and pick a piece of music which is relevant to the country uh, of the visiting dignitary. Because of this, the historic nature of this event, I wanted a piece of music that was quite neutral in tone, um, often with Irish and English music. There can be other connotations historic or emotional involved with music. It can be a very emotive thing. So I decided a neutral piece of music would be the best thing. So I rang Bill Whelan and he was delighted to write this piece of music, um, which I arranged for the, for the wind band. And that's the piece of music that we played as she walked through the troops. The piece was entitled The Walk of a Queen um, by Bill Whelan. Um, obviously, as the Queen was walking through the troops, that was a, a, an appropriate title, but it had a secondary meaning in that it's the, the final line in W.B. Yeats's revolutionary play, Kathleen E. Hoolan. And Kathleen E. Hoolan, as an old woman, embodied the Irish nation, but she was transformed at the, at the very end of the play into a young woman and is described as, as having had the walk of a Queen. So it's very transformative and I think Bill Whelan, in fact I'm sure Bill Whelan understood the transformative nature of this historic event and that's why entitling it this was very appropriate. My first encounter with Queen Elizabeth was in the Auras. Uh, the cars uh, pulled up, naturally there was great excitement and uh, such a historic occasion. Um, the Guard of Honour uh, was lined up. Uh, it probably was a little bit unusual for her in that it was a tripartite Guard of Honour Army, Navy and Air Corps, where she would have been more used uh, to regimental uh, Guards of Honour. Captain Holmes conducted her uh, around the Guard of Honour. Uh, I think that she may have been trying to ask him something as he was going around, but he held tough. Uh, but when she arrived back, uh, she turned to me and uh, said that, my God, she said, they're covered with medals. And I said, yes, Your Majesty. I said, they represent our overseas service in many parts of the world. In fact, in locations where there is conflict, uh, we have troops serving there currently, or we have had them there previously, and the medals represent their service there. And she replied that, my God, she said, that's, that's really wonderful. Once the Guard of Honour was completed, we uh, travelled back to McKee Barracks, um, where myself and the troops went straight from ceremonial role into operational role, and were involved in the security operation at Farmley. On departure from Morris Nuktron, the Queen was escorted to the next event at the Garden of Remembrance, Parnell Square. Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II and Antuktron were received by Minister of Justice, Equality and Defence, Mr. Alan Shatter TD, Chief of Staff, Deputy Chief of Staff Support and General Officer Commanding to Eastern Brigade. But the second part of the escort of honour was delivering from Oris and Uchtron to the Garden of Remembrance in Parnell Square. And when I got there, I stepped forward, I saluted Her Majesty, and I asked permission to dismiss the escort of honour. And she thanked me for our contribution. And it was a very proud moment for me to be the escort of honour commander in, on behalf of the Cavalry Corps and in particular the Two Calf Squadron. The next ceremonial occasion that we had was uh, her visit to the Garden of Remembrance. And uh, she had an escort of honour uh, from the 2nd Cavalry uh, under uh, Captain Orr. 
Captain Keane. Uh, she dismissed the Guard of Honour and spoke to, to Captain Keane. And uh, then we escorted her up onto the plinth. Uh, and then we had a very, very uh, iconic and historic moment uh, when she laid the wreath and bowed her head, uh, having laid the wreath. Um, it really was uh, a striking occasion and from my perspective a tremendous privilege to be so involved and so close to what was going on. Uh, I think uh, history will record that as one of the significant moments in the relationship between uh, our neighbours and ourselves. My name is Common Derek McGorty. I was OAC of the Cadet Guard of Honour. Um, the Cadet Guard of Honour was drawn from the 87 Cadet class and we had two ceremonial taskings for Queen Elizabeth's visit. The first was here in the Garden of Remembrance uh, and the second was in the National War Memorial Gardens in Island Bridge. Obviously when we heard that the Queen was visiting Ireland we were aware that you know the Garden of Remembrance is dedicated to to those um, who've lost their life in pursuit of Irish freedom. So we realised the significance of the event and we realised that these were very inexperienced cadets and it would require significant training um, to get them up to the standard that would be required on the day. So that meant lots of uh, drill and rehearsals and plenty of emphasis on getting the standard of uniform and weapons up to what would be required for a ceremonial event uh, of, of that level. So just prior to the Queen's arrival, um, you could see the Captain Joe Freely to my right, who was responsible for reciting the poem, We Saw a Vision, um, As Gwelga. Um, to my rear was Captain Philip Quinlan, who was the flag officer. Um, to my front and right, you could see the, the Combined Army Band. And then obviously, you could see Queen Elizabeth and then President Mary McAleese approaching um, the Children of Lear uh, sculpture with the rest of the entourage. Um, and at that point, then, I brought the Guard of Honour to attention. Um, then we presented arms for the British National Anthem. And then at that point, it was the, my responsibility was to bring um, the cadets into the position of the rest at arms reverse. And this was in order to um, uh, experience a minute silence where the Queen laid a wreath and very memorably and poignantly bowed her head, uh, uh, acknowledging those again that have, uh, uh, have lost their lives in the cause of Irish freedom. My name is Sergeant Derek Brunt. I'm with Two Brigade Military Police, Government Building Section. I was the wreath bearer for both days on Queen Elizabeth II's visit to Ireland, both here and in the National War Memorial Garden. On the morning and the lead up of the ceremonial event, I was very, very calm. I was 24 years old. I grew up 500 metres from here and very comfortable in this location and in my surroundings. The Queen got out of the car, still very calm. She walked up the, walked up the middle of the garden and still felt very calm. And when it came to my time, when I knew I was going to be on television, that's when I got nervous. So, she came all the way up, came around. She was accompanied by a couple of, a couple of dignitaries, um, Mary McAleese. When she got her first step, when she put her first foot on the step, that's when I began to feel nervous. And it was almost like my senses stopped working and I was just in soldier mode, do the job, and uh, anything around me wasn't kind of in play. I, and almost like my ears stopped working, it was just, yeah, it was a, the gravity of the situation really kicked in. So when it came time to present the Queen with the wreath, I came to attention, marched towards the Queen, turned left, presented the Queen with the wreath, turned left again, and marched away. That was it, job done. Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II arrived at the National War Memorial Gardens and was again received by the Chief of Staff and General Officer Commanding to Eastern Brigade. And my name is Ali O'Connor. I'm the CEO of Oakley Nishunta Nahara. And on the day of the Queen's visit to the Memorial Gardens, I represented the O&E. We were seated in rows over here and there were uh, members of O&E, Ayunva, Arco, Royal Naval Association, Royal British Legion, and many other organisations from the North and South. Well, it was a very proud day because it was a very historical day and I think everybody that was there on the day enjoyed what happened. We, we were very close to the Queen and the President on the day and it was really enjoyable. Everybody looked immaculate and it was great and I was a proud member of o &E that day. My name is Paul Smith. I'm the founder member of the United Nations Veterans Association and I was present in the War Memorial Park 
on the day of the Queen's visit, representing the organisation. And uh, I was very proud to do so. At the conclusion of the ceremony on the day, the Queen and the President McAleese walked past me. And as she was passing by, President McAleese informed the Queen that we had been present at the opening of the Peace Park in France in 97, when they both opened the Peace Park together. And it was very uplifting to, be, to, to see that she remembered who we were. On the day, I felt very proud and privileged to be here for the Queen's visit, because I had been here as a child. I can remember my grandfather bringing me here as a young child, and I was so privileged to be asked to represent the United Nations Veterans Association here on the day. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and President McAleese laid a wreath, followed by a minute's silence. What I would say is that on behalf of both of the visitors, it was, I felt, their genuine delight at being in Ireland uh, as part of the visit and their great interest in everything. Uh, I already mentioned the medals. And Prince Philip also had uh, a great interest in medals uh, and was uh, asking about the numerals and the colours and the significance of them. And in particular in Island Bridge, as we walked along, uh, we discussed the various medals. He asked me if we had any uh, documentation on them and I informed him that we did have a book uh, which had been produced by C.Q. O'Connor uh, just the previous year in fact. And he asked if I could send him on a copy. I said I would, uh, and I did, and I got a lovely note back to say it was in his uh, library. Uh, as we walked around, I mentioned to him, you're enjoying the visit, Your Highness. And he replied, and I'm sure it's a line that he has used on previous occasions, yes, he said, I just can't understand all this fuss about my wife. My name is Captain Jeff Kern and I'm Senior Writing Officer here at the Equitation School. On the day there was four of us on parade uh, at the National Stud. That day I was riding Kilmichael. The role of the Army Equitation School is to promote Ireland and the Irish horse. We were absolutely delighted to be part of such a momentous occasion on the day. Unfortunately, I didn't get to mention to the Queen that I competed against her granddaughter Zara on numerous occasions on the international stage. August. <laughs> And of course, again, another iconic moment uh, when she uh, addressed the gathering in uh, Osquilia. And everybody it really made a huge impression. And again, it was um, an incredible occasion to be present at and to see uh, a historical occasion uh, like that. Captain's Courtesy Guard of Honour, provided by 4th Infantry Battalion, paraded at Cork Airport on the 20th of May for the Queen's departure. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II was escorted through the Courtesy Guard of Honour by Antishuk and the Chief of Staff, while General Officer Commanding 1 Southern Brigade, Brigadier General Paul Packenham, escorted the Duke of Edinburgh. My final involvement was at the departure from Cork Airport. There was a great sense of relief that everything had gone so well so far. Uh, when she arrived, uh, the Taoiseach and myself escorted her to the departure line. 
uh, and uh, I went to the end of the line as is normal and the teacher introduced everybody in the line and as he came to me he said um, this is our chief of staff uh, General McCann and she stopped looked at him and said yes we have met and then she said to me I'd like to thank you for your assistance during the visit and I replied that it was a pleasure your majesty um, there was a huge element of relief as the plane took off and uh, everything had gone extremely well and I think that the contribution from the Defence Forces operationally, ceremonially, every way uh, was outstanding and I think it's a great tribute to our personnel. We've always had phenomenal personnel and they really stepped up and performed superbly uh, during the four-day visit.